started just for those of you who are here. I'm Ellen Jaffe Jones. Welcome to my kitchen. I'm going to be doing a couple of recipes tonight from my book, Eat Vegan on $4 a Day. And what really prompted this was getting kind of uh, an interesting event at my dentist earlier last week. And uh, as I was getting my teeth worked on, I was watching the Food Network or the Food Channel, and there was this woman who was deep frying and bragging about it, bacon fried green beans. And I thought, you know, I, I have a friend who has been trying to get me a network gig cooking show on CNN and some other networks that he has connections to. And uh, unfortunately, um, this has, uh, you know, not resulted in anything. And I um, uh, have just felt really, um, you know, kind of badly about it, but um, I felt after seeing this woman deep fry green beans, you know, this is sad for our kids and I need to just do it on my own and uh, muddle through trying to do a program. So I've been very fortunate to have, um, this is my little make good sign here, food donated by Fresh Market. And they have uh, generously supplied all this food tonight. So if I can figure out, um, how to do the technical part of this. Uh, you know, I, I, I have joked that behind every good uh, cookbook author, there is usually an IT guy or usually a guy uh, or gal that helps them do this kind of stuff. So um, I apologize for not being able to see where you are from. I hope you're typing that in and maybe it, each of you can see where the other is from. You know, part of the reason I really wanted to do this is because um, I live in a community about 30 minutes away from the nearest meetup, and um, uh, there is, it, it's just a very isolated kind of community, and um, I, people drive around this town with bumper stickers that say, I kill fish, and um, it's just kind of, uh, you know, I sort of wanted this to be a weekly event, if I can figure out the technical part of it. and. Um, I just uh, really want us to be able to kind of hang out and enjoy our company. And so, um, oh, there, I think I enabled the group chat. Okay, enter chat message or link here. Well, at least I did. All right, so I hope as you sign on to this call, you are uh, saying where you're from and, um, and hopefully I've pressed the right button now that we'll enable this. So I've been on lots of Google Hangouts, but I've never been an admin and uh, I'm hearing all kinds of beeps. So I assume that means that people are jumping in on the call. So thanks very much for joining here and uh, bearing with me. And I'm hoping that you can hear okay. It looks like my microphone is working. And um, Again, I'm not able to see any comments. So I'm hearing some beeps. I assume that means that, um, okay, can you see the questions? Okay, collect, click the button to answer a question. Oh, Debbie Bamel, okay, there you are. Thank you, thank you for jumping on. Now, uh, a friend of mine in Boston um, promoted this among the Boston meetup groups there. Uh, I've spoken at their Veg Fest and um, so very cool. We have anybody on from Boston yet? I know you guys have a lot of snow, so um, I hope that this will warm your evening. And let's get started here. Without further ado, I think we have enough people on the call. We'll give you what you came for. So we're going to be doing Penny Pincher Pitas, which is from my book, Eat Vegan on $4 a Day. It's on page 88 if you'd like to um, follow along. And uh, we're going to be starting with that first, and then we'll be moving on to the community garden salad on page 53. As we go along, uh, my idea was that you would be able to ask me questions, but until I figure out how I can see your questions, um, certainly feel free to, oh, here's a select. Yeah, okay, selecting questions. All right. Answered questions. Well, I'm not going to take the time to write a question out right now, but Anyway, uh, so we're going to add a cup of water to the skillet, and we're going to add um, 
some tomato sauces later, but first let's cut up our green onion. And I like to use the Kyocera knives, they're really sharp. And you know, when I my first television job was in Des Moines, Iowa, and we used to be a one man band, that's what we called it there. So I'm gonna tilt the camera down a little bit so you can see me working here. And as uh, I like to replace my knives about once a year or so if they really seem to be dull. But these these ceramic Kyocera knives are incredible. I got these online, but I've seen them at the grocery stores, and it's just quite quite cool. So I hope everybody is able to hear me, and I am going to be using some skillets from. Um, a really cool company. It's very shiny stuff. I think you can see it there called Antics or um, Platinum is actually the name of the actual brand of skillets. It's made with stainless and titanium, very non-reactive. Um, and these induction burners run by magnets and they really heat up the skillet quite, uh, quite intensely. And um, but yet you, supposedly you can put your hand on the burner and you won't burn yourself. Now I haven't tried that, but it's going to make some noise. So I want to get um, get this going. And it has settings you can set by uh, temperature or just by the numbers. And um, the one thing about them though is that they cook very fast. They heat things really uh, intensely. Um, so you you really have to keep your eye on it. And you can also set a timer to it, which is cool too. Um, so we will get working on that and then um, you can add some vegetable broth to this and we have lots of vegetable broths to choose from here. This is your typical cubed broth which I like especially for warmer climates like where we are here in Florida. Um, this is wrapped individually so you know maybe not environmentally great but uh, it keeps the critters out. Now I've, um, this stuff is wonderful and um, you can find it, the only place I've actually been able to find it is at Whole Foods, which is about uh, an hour from my house on a typical northern touristy day here. So, uh, and because there aren't any preservatives in it, you really have to keep an eye on it in terms of the shelf life once you do open it. You can also buy the hermetically sealed containers like this and that's what we're going to be using tonight. This is just vegetable stock and in my next life we'll have some overhead mirrors so you can see all this but now we're just going to be kind of cozy down here and I'm going to be cramped uh, into the camera and hopefully won't get a steam bath on my face here as we start ramping it up. Now um, Normally we would like saute the onions in uh, a little bit of water here, but um, we're going to add some of the tomato sauce right now. And I'm just going to angle this up. And um, we're going to start with a can of tomato sauce. And I like to use the cans, of course, if we're going to be using cans. And you can make your own tomato sauce, knock yourself out just by cooking down some tomatoes. But Muir Glen has long been a proponent of using non-BPA cans. And so, fortunately, Fresh Market has them. So that is what we will be using. And then the recipe calls for a third of a can, a uh, small can of tomato sauce, but we'll add a little bit more tonight. And as it heats up, that will spread out. And there are different ways you can spice this up. The recipe calls for um, tomatoes and chilies. So you can get those in these kinds of cans here, the Rotel, and just add that. Other ways you can spice it up, if this isn't enough for you, of course. We can add uh, actual chili peppers, if you'd like to do that. Or, of course, the old standby sriracha, yeah. But I think we will just leave it at this for right now and get those onions a little cooked up before we start adding other things. And this is going to make a nice, rich sauce once we get through it. 
All right. While this is getting ready to simmer, I'm going to move a little bit away to start processing some of the vegetables for the community garden salad. And hopefully this won't come out of my ear. Um, we're going to start with a head of romaine, which I have over here. And we'll just pull this into view. I've got this food cutter here, which is also by the same company. And you know, I just love shortcuts, things that you can do in the kitchen to make your life really easy. And uh, with the lettuce, we'll just, now some people are purists and they like to just tear the leaves apart, but if you're in a hurry, cutting them is gonna do the job just fine. The idea is to be eating, oh, I don't know, four, five, six, seven, maybe even nine servings of veggies every day. And how you do that in a crazy busy world is the trick of your life. And so if you're just joining the call, I see we have a healthy audience. I didn't really publicize this class a whole lot myself because I knew this was my first time being the host of a Google Hangout. And as you can see, they're quite challenging. I haven't figured out how yet to see questions or to enable, I've enabled, I thought, the questions, but I can't see where uh, you guys are saying hello and all that fun stuff. So, um, and I've done, I've been the guest on a number of shows, a number of Google Hangouts, so I thought I kind of knew this going in, but you know, all this technology stuff is changing by the minute. So. You just do, do the best you can, and because I'm so motivated to try and uh, take my cooking classes, which I've done for the better part of a decade, although quite uh, formally, informally, actually, in my, my family's life for lots of years. So I, I'm really just trying to figure out ways to take this a little more uh, globally and, and expose people to the idea that um, genes are not destiny. You really can do so much to... Uh, encourage health and to improve your health and even reverse disease. So, all right, um, we've got the romaine in the community garden salad and now we're going to attach one of these blades. Now, uh, I'm just gonna show that to you up close there and we attach it, I'll angle it a little bit so you can see this. It's so simple and what I love about this is that it actually comes apart right like this. Let's see if I can pop it off. So I travel with this a lot when I'm doing food and cooking demos on the road and it's just so easy. And um, we're gonna start with our, uh, let's start with our carrot and we'll show you how finely it shreds up things. And I was just recently, I ran a big race in Tampa last weekend called Gasparilla. It's like the biggest race and they have all these different uh, events from a 5K to a half marathon. I had just done a half marathon a couple weeks before that, so I only did the 8K. got 20th in my age group, which wasn't too bad, um, or about 80 totally. And, you know, for those of you who follow me, I'm much more of a sprinter. I'm actually first in the state of Florida from everything to the 50 meters to the... Um, to the uh, 1500 meters. And um, I'm always looking for ways to eat on the run, so to speak. So you can see this device is just so cool in terms of getting shredded raw foods into your diet so quickly. Now you can use a food processor. I've got mine sitting over there on the counter. And that's unfortunately where it stays when I have this thing. I mean, this is so pretty, I just leave it out on the counter. And the only thing you have to be careful of is your fingers, like with any food processor. But you can, like, stick your fingers in it like that and pull out the veggies. And I love to do that. Then this recipe also calls for one radish. So, again, we don't want to overpower things too much. And it's got this safety catch on it, which um, I've used some other versions of this and not as successfully. Uh, in fact, there was another company whose name shall remain nameless that um, had one of these out and uh, they tried to retrofit their devices and the plastic actually ended up getting ground up in the food. But I don't know how this company avoids that, but they do. Um, you still have to be careful. 
but uh, I have never cut myself on this. And um, suffice it to say, I've lost the battle with other food processors. All right, the next thing we're going to shred will be, um, let's go with the beet. Well, the beet is, you know, I like to save that for last because it stains everything and it's kind of a hoot. But um, we'll make sure that we have enough room for all the other veggies that are going in here. Let's do the cauliflower. And uh, we have half a head of cauliflower. And what I like about using this small blade on here, if you, there's, there's a big food and recipes kind of go in crazes and fads and phases and um, cauliflower rice or replacing rice with cauliflower is uh, one of the phases that I've seen over the years and I'll just show you this up close and personally you can kind of see it looks like rice and I do not want to drop this on my laptop keyboard but I hope you get the idea there that again so easy and so fast to make a salad this way and I'm doing it kind of slowly just so it doesn't go flying all over the place. But when I'm doing this just for myself, it um, goes faster. And you just go inside and get it all out and rotate to the other side. And I'm going to turn this down. And uh, when I was speaking at the Tampa Veg Fest one year, Melanie Joy, you know, you may recall her. She wrote the book, Why We Love Dogs. Um, eat pigs and wear cows. I may have reversed one of the order pieces of the order there, but she was sitting next to me and she saw this. I, I was doing a food demo and I had it in my bag. I didn't even have it assembled. And she asked what it was and I told her and she goes, you have just revolutionized my life. And um, I think, you know, people think that eating a vegan diet has to be complicated and it just doesn't. And I'm always looking for shortcuts and, and ways to do this. Let's change blades just for variety's sake. And one of the things you need to do is wash these very quickly, well, relatively quickly. These are all numbered on the bottom. The first one there was a one. We're going to go up to a two, which will give us a slightly bigger shred, but not much. The idea here, as we're always saying, is eat the colors of the rainbow. And what I love about this is, you know, you can cut up zucchini and have like zucchini noodles, but that gives you an idea of the shred, the size of the shred on this one. And beets are just so colorful. Oh, you know what? I forgot to forgot to peel the beet, but um, some people like to eat the skin on, and some beets actually don't have the reason you peel them mainly. And I did scrub the beet. Uh, actually, I used the brush to scrub the carrot right before, and I wanted to show you that it still has a little residue on it. But what uh, scrubbing the skin allows you to do is to eat the skin. And there are certainly some good nutrients in the skin that it's worth hanging on to. And let's just see if these taste bitter. Oh, good. So if you can keep the skin on, if you can tolerate it, um, that's just more food for you and less waste. My husband said there was some story today about, um, in the state of Washington, is it, that you actually get fined if you don't compost. How cool is that? So I don't know what they do in New York. <laughs> All right, so that is our beet and our cauliflower. And we'll just pull this off to the side. And um, the idea is just to make your salad as colorful and beautiful. And I certainly overdid the, the beets there. But you can see just yep, there went some of the greens. So there's how it's looking so far. Now, I could do a little more moving around. But we'll just sort of morph over to the other recipe now. And I don't want this to come flying out of my ear. So... Good thing I'm wearing black. Tomato sauce goes really well with black, at least on the lower part. All right. So back to the penny pincher pitas. We're going to add some chili powder. And what I like about Fresh Market, did I mention that they donated all the food for this? So, you know, it's really very cool. I, I'm not sure how widespread they are all over the country, but they're out there. So they put their spices in these little packets, which is kind of cool because when I do cooking classes, I always ask people, like, 
how long, when was the last time you threw out your spices? And usually the answer is like, oh, anywhere from six to 10 years ago. <laughs> you really should like purge them about every year or so, but a lot of people just don't do that. All right, so we're gonna mix in the chili powder. And then we're going to throw in some white beans or cannellini beans. And if you can pressure cook these, cook them from scratch, knock yourself out. Awesome. We went the shortcut route today and just did the whole canned thing. And then we will mix in some corn. And I just wanted to say a word about corn. Fresh Market has a lot of different varieties of frozen corn, and I'm just going to show you a couple of them while we are making, while we're letting this cook. I think we have everything in there that needs to cook for now. And this is the kind of corn that I used for the recipe. Now, um, I asked the question because this always comes up and I just wanted to see what the current answer is because I'm not always following food labeling and food laws and the whole farm bill thing. So it says USDA organic. And I said, does organic mean that it is non-GMO? And I knew the answer to this, I thought. And the answer, of course, is no. So is this labeled non-GMO? No, it is not. So let's go to another brand, Cascadian Farms, which is a brand I've been buying for years. And this is premium organic sweet corn. Now, the whole, la you know, I used to be a TV consumer reporter, right? And uh, so the whole labeling thing, the food companies really dance around some of these, these labels. Um, but this does not say that it's non-GMO as far as I can tell. Now, you know, there are some labels like all natural, no preservatives. And again, nothing that says non-GMO. However, there are many products out there now that are labeled that say non-GMO. And that's an informal, not legal kind of thing yet. But uh, if you wish to participate and have your product labeled as such until it is required national laws that we are going to be um, uh, required to put this on our packaging. It's not there yet. So some of the companies are voluntarily doing this, but you have to look. It's actually a separate uh, label, and I'm just looking to see if anything I have here has that. Um, this one says no MSG added, and that's important. Uh, Gluten-free, no salt added, and um, heart healthy and all that fun stuff. All right. Now, another thing that we can add to this, this uh, recipe, um, it calls for a, a shredding of lettuce, which we'll use as a topping. And instead of, since we have our salad, our community garden salad, we're just going to use some combinations of greens that I have here. So uh, this will be used for the pita, the penny pincher pitas. And we will put them right here. Um, I'm also um, going to just cut up some tomatoes here. Now, these are some really beautiful heirloom tomatoes. And as you can see, they're pretty irregular. And there's actually a kind of fl uh, a tomato in Florida called ugly ripe tomatoes. <laughs> I just, I love that they're ugly. And I love that they're really ripe. They're so soft to the touch. So you got to use them. Uh, pretty quickly. Now, these are organic, and you can kind of tell it's the whole Joni Mitchell, if you remember her song, uh, Give Me Spots on My Apples, Believe Me the Birds and the Bees, Please. And so um, I always try and buy tomatoes that are ugly <laughs> and irregular and have spots on them, and it's okay if they do. I know that uh, Debbie Bommel, one of my friends from St. Louis, is on this call. And we were both La Leche League leaders together. I hope I'm not embarrassing you, Debbie, by saying that. But breastfeeding information and support group is what La Leche League is. And we would get those middle of the night phone calls um, with uh, you know, people saying, oh, my, my or, you know, mom's saying, my baby won't nurse. And it's that whole species-specific milk thing that um, every 
mammal has very spe species specific milk designed to make its own species grow appropriately. And so uh, kind of like being vegan, we sort of hung out together um, because there just even back then wasn't a whole lot of support for breastfeeding. And so we had play groups and our kids kind of grew up together and we had backyard gardens. And so tomatoes like this really bring back memories of that and how important it is if you have access to any kids in your life that you have some kind of a garden, even if it's a container vegetable or whatever it is. Um, my kids still complain. I don't know about yours, Debbie, but uh, they can't find cherry tomatoes like the ones we had growing up um, with, with our gardens in St. Louis. And um, so the sense of smell and taste that are formed at an early age um, all impact kids. And if you have a way of reaching them, it's so important to just grow a garden, even if it's just a little one. All right. So we're going to cut out the ugly stem on this ugly tomato. And by the way, the ugly ripe tomato thing was a whole kind of a joke, I think, as it got started because the tomatoes, somebody thought, I guess the Department of Agriculture said they were too ugly and too ripe to be shipped out of Florida. So as a result, Florida grocery stores have access to these kinds of tomatoes. And that's just really um, a great option for people to have that as a part of what you can add to your salad and your food. Now, this tomato, as it cuts up, now that I was bragging about that, it looks a little bit mushy, maybe. Um, and who knows, you know, my poor radishes didn't do so well. They probably got exposed to too much moisture, either, I don't know. We, it's been really humid here in Florida. And, uh, you know, maybe on the drive home, although it wasn't all that far away from the store that I was. So who knows? But, you know, you just have to be, um, because they are ripe tomatoes, you got to use them pretty quickly. All right. Um, that will go for a topping. And let's see, what else can we do? Oh, the salad dressing. All right. So there's a million kinds of vinegars. And, you know, my whole goal, if I can figure out how to do all this technology stuff, is just to keep cooking recipes from my books until, you know, I join the next world or whatever. Because I think it's so important to be able to share with people how you do this stuff and to show it's really easy. It doesn't have to be complicated. So there are a million kinds of vinegars. We have the Bragg's apple cider vinegar. That's one of my favorites. And then, of course, red wine vinegar. You can use that. Sometimes, though, they have sulfites. Uh, a lot of the vinegars do, but some don't. Um, and this is pear vinegar. And this is pretty common at a lot of stores, including Fresh Market. Did I mention they donated food for this? I love them. Uh, and fig-infused vinegar. Oh, there's so many different flavors of vinegar. You can knock yourself out. In fact, there's a huge price range. And I asked about that at Fresh Market, and they said, uh, you know, it's just like wines. And um, you can really find a lot of variety in terms of the different vinegars. So I think we're going to use the apple cider vinegar. Now, what's really cool is that you can, you know, you can go buy some of the recipes in my book, or you can just be really lazy like I like to do, and just get one of these old Good Seasons bottles. And um, you can add vinegar up to the vinegar line on that. And again, this doesn't have to be complicated. So up to the V line, and then the next line is uh, water. And um, let's see if we can reach it. Stand by. We're back. And up to the water line here, and then we can add a little bit of oil. The oil is right here. And you know, I like to show that I'm using fresh ingredients, the ingredients I got yesterday at Fresh Market. Um, Fresh Market, by the way, you know, we, at first when they went in here locally in the Bradenton, Florida area, we were kind of disappointed. Oh, Whole Foods didn't go in, but Fresh Market is seriously rocks. I mean, I, I say that. That's why I ended up um, asking if I could get food for these classes because I just love their stuff. It's very fresh, as their name suggests. So now some people don't want to add oil, added fats. 
you know, one of my books is paleo vegan and, you know, we're the paleolithic folks a million, two million years ago going around stomping on olives to get processed oil out of them or, or nut oils or seed oils. Yeah, probably not. But, you know, if it means sticking to a vegan diet and adding a little bit of fat to your diet, I'm okay with that. Um, unless, of course, you have beginning stages heart disease and you have a doctor who says, maybe, you know, you don't want to be having a high fat diet of any kind. And I'm not a doctor, I'm not a registered dietitian, and that's one of the biggest divisions in the vegan community at this point. So I'm just going to say, blood tests never lie. If you have concerns, go get one and talk to a good vegan friendly, if not a vegan doctor. I wish we had more of them in our area. Just going to add two teaspoons of Italian spices. And that's really all that's going to be in this dressing. Nothing complicated. You can add a little salt, a little pepper if you need to. And really, you don't have to do much more than that. And let's add, for fun's sake, a little color to our salad, some edamame. This is frozen edamame. I need to get a longer microphone, although this one's pretty long. It's just going around all the food. Um, this has been shelled, so that's going to be a little more expensive if you, if you buy the edamame that's still in the shell. You won't have to deal with that. So we're going to bring our big salad over. And there we go. And put our edamame in the center. And there you have a very colorful salad. Now, if I were a fancy chef, which I am not, I like to say I'm a functional chef. I get it done for all the moms of the world and dads who have to cook. So there you go. We're going to put our salad on and our salad dressing on the salad. And we will. Toss it and mix it, and it'll be beautiful. All right, that is our salad. Now to our community, um, to our penny pincher pitas. We will be mixing this up a little more thoroughly here. And I'm just going to double check, make sure we got all of our ingredients, the green onions, one and three-fourths cup cannellini white beans, the diced tomatoes and chilies, a can of that, half cup of corn, one-third cup unsalted tomato paste, but as I mentioned, we did about two-thirds cup, and then one teaspoon of chili powder, hot pepper sauce, if you want. And now we've shredded the lettuce. We have our chopped tomato and, oh, the cukes. Okay. So here is the story on the cucumbers. Um, this is a cucumber. And this is a zucchini. As you can see, they look a lot alike. So feel free to, inter to use them interchangeably. And we're going to pop off the blade. And let's put on blade number three. And I'm going to move our tomatoes into this bowl and move our lettuce under here. We're just going to push this off to the side because these are going to be the toppings for the penny pincher pitas. And again, as you can see, this will go very quickly. Now, this is the third size the medium size and it just takes on this cucumber in no time flat. How cool is that? This is not an organic cucumber. You can kind of tell the they have food grade. The ones that are not organic have food grade um, wax coating on them. It makes it so that they can be transported and not get all bruised and damaged. But again, that may be something that's not important. It can be imperfect, as the saying goes. All right. Now, this is kind of a, this is the largest blade. And what I like about this is that it makes these waffly kinds of 
cut, sort of like a potato chip, although it's a zucchini. And there are many great raw recipes out there using a marinara sauce, which is kind of cool. And instead of, uh, and they used like these spiralizers, and, and I've had a couple of those, and they're, they're a lot cheaper than these, but they, at least my luck with them hasn't been very good, and they have um, broken, <laughs> actually, when I try and crank it. So this is so much easier, as you can see. So um, we have our zucchini and cucumber toppings ready to go. Now we're going to get our pita, and we will move this off the cutting board and I actually have a dry cutting board that we'll replace this one with to do the cutting for our pitas. I think it's so important, you know, as I've mentioned, getting kids to participate in the cooking process. I know a number of registered dietitians and uh, they tell me that kids just don't cook today, that it is a real challenge to get them to be able to cook anything unless it comes in a microwavable box. So I like to keep recipes simple, short and sweet. And um, when we do this particular recipe, it's always a, a great idea if you can to get kids involved in the process. Even if they dump the whole bag of blueberries in the blender, it's just fine. So you can see our pita is open here, and we're going to grab our serving spoon. So first we will just get a big healthy spoonful. Try not to drip on the counter here. So we'll go for small. And this pita has a hole in one end, so <laughs> as they often do, what are you going to do? but at least you'll get the idea of how we do this. And then we will add our stuffing of cucumbers and zucchinis. Use one or the other or both like I have, and this thing is totally falling apart. And then also some lettuce in here. All right, so you can kind of get the idea. I'm using a combination of spinach and this um, Deep Green Blends Power Blend. Now there are so many different kinds of green blends out there, especially from Earthbound Farm and other companies that are uh, incorporating all the different greens that are out there. So you can see how pretty that looks, even with the collapsed roof over there. So, um, oh, we forgot our tomatoes. There we go, just to add some more color. And there it is. There it is. An easy lunch or dinner. All right, how are we doing on time? Well, wow, that was 45 minutes that's gone by. Let me see. I'm going to try and um, wipe my hands clean before I touch the laptop. And grabbing the paper towels here and see if we can enable the Q&A. Okay. Oh, there it is. All right. Maynard, hi. How are you? I hope you're still here. Can we borrow children if we don't have kids of our own? Any thoughts on kids in the community? Well, I don't know about your community, um, but I can only answer for mine. Oh, I'm so glad I can finally see these questions. And again, thank you, everybody, for hanging in here with me. This is the the uh, let's hang out with other vegans part of the call or vegan wannabes or people who are just learning about uh, what it's like to eat, live, and be with vegans. Um, so what do shredder grow? Okay, I'm just looking at all these questions now that I can see them. Okay. Um, so I actually was a volunteer coach at our local high school for cross country and track. It was so much fun. And the first time I would actually physically run with the kids and you know, they'd say things like, you're the age of my grandmother and you are running faster than me. What's up with that? And you know, it's long been my belief as I'm fond of saying that a vegan diet and mix it up with a little bit of aerobic exercise is the best kept secret in America. You know, ask your doctor if plants are right for you. So um, 
if you can find a way to connect with kids, or if you want to, I mean, there certainly are ways to do that. And schools, I think, are looking for volunteers to do all kinds of things. When I was a coach, they uh, <laughs> they kept me off the grid. That was how it was. I didn't get paid, obviously. And it was just uh, the kind of thing where I showed up after school every day, four days a week, to do to run cross country with the kids and, and help them out and help the coach out because it, it was a lot of kids. She was actually coaching boys and girls for a while, and then it was just... Um, just girls. I'm going to turn this off before I stick my hand in the <laughs> in the tomato sauce. Um, but yeah, there are lots of ways you can get involved. Um, just you know, check with your local local uh, community, and um, if that doesn't work, a dog or a cat is always good too. <laughs> As my husband likes to say, if you want a friend, get a dog or a cat. Um, but no, kids are, are really fun to work with, and, and especially I think they do respond better to people who are not their parents, at least uh, in some cases. All right, what do shredder grades mean? Um, shredder, I, I don't recall using the word grades, but as you can see, there are, and these machines, and a number of companies are now making them. When I, I did the Tampa Veg Fest, I mean, I did the uh, the Tampa Gasparilla, the race uh, last weekend, there was actually, you had to go to a health expo. A lot of these races are getting very savvy, and they're trying to make money on the runners who come to register and pick up their race pack at the day before, a couple of days before, and there was somebody demoing one of these. So, um, but they're, they're really quite cool. If you're interested, I don't want to make this at all a sales call, but because these things really do sell themselves that I do sell them but you can send me an email um, or just contact me afterwards um, by the way my website is vegcoach.com if you want to be in touch all right um, so there are different sizes on these these blades and uh, I hope that answers your question is this all done from your laptop computer yes <laughs> okay if you want to send me um, you know I was thinking about moving a table into the office where uh, my my laptop is a um, uh, MacBook Pro and I have an iMac and you know I have all the Apple products which and I really do love them um, so but I'm doing this from the laptop and yeah being the floor director and everything camera person are those heirloom tomatoes I think I did say they were at our neighborhood farmers market they're always sweet and very soft and very perishable yes sir they are keep in mind species specific Maynard says okay um, how would you set this up in a community health fair? Oh, gosh. Um, so easy. I mean, I do this. Uh, I mean, we're lucky in Florida because a lot of things are outside, but I just take a table and I take basically everything you have here. And they always have electricity. So it's very easy to cook if you want to. But I have learned because I've done so many veg fests where, um, you know, you get there and, and most of them are so well organized, especially Boston. Maynard, by the way, is very involved in Boston. So if you, uh, want any access to the Boston Veg Fest, he's your go-to guy. Um, but it's so easy to set all this stuff up because they usually have some source of electricity. But my experience, I was about to say, is you can do raw dishes as well. And just having this kind of stuff there makes it easy not to depend on electricity because sometimes, you know, there are always issues and uh, you just kind of have to be prepared for everything. It's kind of like television when the teleprompter goes backwards or doesn't go at all and you just have to ad lib like we've been doing here tonight. Okay. Um, so the health fairs, by the way, are very interested in doing um, these kinds of events. There was just a little local half marathon and I've been there every year with my table all day long. Um, you know, just having a table with my books, of course. And uh, and some of them want to do some kind of food demonstration. There's another group out of Tampa that they organize all these things and they just ask me to show up. They buy a bunch of my books and I either just stay there at the table and interact with people um, or I can um, just do it in a way that is uh, kind of conducive to the event itself. So you just have to see what, you know, go online. Most of these places have online uh, forms that you can fill out and you kind of get a feel for what they're looking for. All right. Um, awesome, Maynard. We have a community center where we distribute 12 to 20 bags of fresh produce for $2 a bag. Yeah. There are so many interesting programs like that. I know um, there was some place out in California. Was it San, um, San Jose, Santa Monica? Um, San Jose? That had like the food bank. Um, they got like a, they got a whole 
big donation for 30 days. But the only condition was that everybody accepting food from the food bank that month had to eat vegan. So I think that went over well. I haven't really followed up on that, but that was a great story. All right, so I am now seeing all these questions uh, from Maynard. Thank you very much. I see that we still have 13 people on the call and about 10 minutes left. So if you have any other questions, please do feel free to chime in and um, ask me anything. I am a certified personal trainer as well as a certified running coach, and I've done all this running stuff. If you follow me on Facebook, um, either my personal page or Eat Vegan on $4 a Day, all my books uh, have their own Facebook pages. And, um, you know, I'm out there just trying to run and race to show people, yes, you can do this on a vegan diet. And I always wear this shirt to the races, um, and people would just kind of come up to me and go, like get this strange look in their face and go, how? <laughs> or really can't run on a vegan diet as I'm standing there holding one of the, as of last weekend, 83 5K races or longer that I've placed in since 2006 just on plants. So there are ways to do this and uh, I'm just trying to be out there showing that it can be done. Um, and, you know, I'm, who of your Boston, let's see, we have a community, okay. Uh, who of your Boston contacts would like to appear in a mid-April weekend community health fair to do a food demo and sell your books? All right, well, private message me afterwards, Maynard, and we can talk about that. Um, yeah, and if there's anybody on this call, certainly feel free, who is from Boston, because I know you did send out uh, a number of um, messages on Meetup about this event. So this is the kind of thing, again, I, I want to make this sort of a cyber meetup where I know, as I, I tried to say on the beginning of this call, I'm not sure all of that was there, that um, I know many people live in communities where they don't have access to a lot of um, meetup groups, especially vegan ones, or they have to drive a long distance. So if we can kind of tie this community get together, my, my goal is to be able to get the recipes to you in advance so we could actually cook together and maybe even eat together. It's almost like we were at a meetup. Um, so is that something that interests people? Would you be wanting to do that? Um, just put that question out there. And um, also, I tried to do this at the beginning. If we, I know it looks like we still have 13 people on the call. So if you want to say where you're from, I'd love to hear where you are from. I'm also interested in hearing what you would like to see going forward. I'm certainly happy to do a couple of recipes. OK, that is like my daughter texting me. Um, Debbie, if you're still on the call, I think that's Jessica. Uh, it's such a time warp, isn't it, when you've known people for 20, 25 years and uh, our kids like grew up together and, and uh, there they are. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, just please feel free, even if you don't want to do it here, let me know what you would like to see going forward as, as I do this. I just um, have this kind of vision. You know, it's like being a television reporter sometimes when I would have these gut feelings about stories. And I have this gut feeling that we really should be more connected now that the technology is allowing us to do this. Um, it really is allowing us to uh, participate in a way that was not possible just a few years ago. And, um, you know, if I can figure out how to do all these technical things just by myself and do it as a one-man band, one-woman band, um, then there's hope for all of us. Um, okay, let's see. Do we have any other questions coming in? Well, I do appreciate those. We have about seven minutes left before I sign off. So this is your last chance to throw in a question or two or just, you know, say what's going on um, that concerns you in your vegan world, the vegan universe. There are so many different issues that um, have been kind of thrown out there in social media lately. And uh, you know, some people are vegan for health reasons. Some are strictly for animal rights and you know they, they wouldn't give it up for anything. And um, as we have seen in the last couple of years, some people who do it for health and then, you know, they, they kind of jump on to the latest craze or fad and then it's not happening for them anymore. You know, me personally, I lost 25 pounds in 2000, um, 2004, hopefully for the last time. 
And that's when I, you know, my knees weren't hurting quite so much with uh, losing the weight. And I started running again. And uh, I was able to incorporate all of that into um, our Florida lifestyle here. And Florida is a great place to run because we don't have what you got in Boston, those mean hills. Um, so um, I think, uh, let's see. Maynard, okay. Species specific. Yes, I think we touched on that. I'm just going back over some other questions to see if I missed anything. I thought I saw one. Oh, tell Jessica I said hi. I guess that's Debbie. I will do that. Sorry, I just got here. Who is that? Oh, Al. Okay. Hi. Um, yeah, I thought I'd seen another another um another comment well i think we're going to wrap this up we are coming up on the top of the hour as we used to say in broadcasting if you think of anything else you want to hear from me uh any other topics you know maybe i'll even get to the point where i can actually interview other people but uh you know the technology here is um at best still challenging for me and some people now that i've done it from the camera man that's the function that they show here um, director and, and just having done it from this end I understand how challenging it can be um, if I can help you with your fitness program I love as you can see these these um, I would say fancy but they're really not and I just uh, heard that on daylight savings time I guess that's next weekend that Apple is coming out with its version of this this is Garmin's um, this is an activity tracker as well as it does running outside, indoor running like on a treadmill. It does indoor biking, outdoor biking, and the same thing for swimming inside and outside swimming. And the technology is changing so quickly and it's so amazing that you can get all this. Um, I used to like <laughs> do it the old fashioned way and write things down, drive the car and check the odometer to see how far a mile was and then that's how I would keep track of what I was doing when I started running um, in my mid-20s. And uh, I, I think that we can all um, include more exercise in our life, and uh, unless you are living all day at a gym. But um, there's so many ways to do it easily now if I can help you with a program. Do let me know. VegCoach.com is where you can find me. And uh, I just want to thank everybody for hanging in there and putting up with my techno wazo stuff here. And I hope that you have a great week. And we will try and do this again next Wednesday, same time, same station, with two more recipes. All right, everybody, thanks for joining in, and um, have a great week, and stay warm. Got to run.